Hi, this is Charlie Sutterfield. This is um, the third part of a series of videos, uh, probably broken down into more chunks, but um, the third section where we're going to talk about custom title blocks uh, that you might want to develop if you're setting up office standards for um, rolling out Revit at an architectural or engineering office. So let's get going. So um, a title block is really a component. So if you go through your project browser, you're going to find uh, sheets down toward the bottom of that. And let's, let's see where those guys come from. So what I'm going to do is hit, um, I can either open families here on the gray screen, or I can go to the purple R, uh, click on that one, slide down to open, and then slide over to family, and go ahead and click on family. That takes me to the Imperial Library, where I can see all the folders of um, components that are available to me. I'm going to slide down toward the bottom of that and I'm going to find title blocks. And so I double click on title blocks to open that folder and those are the standard title blocks that have been loaded with Revit as it comes out of the box. And I want to create a custom one. I want to say that I've got a, uh, a client who needs 30 by 30 title blocks and that's not on my list. So I'm going to start with a uh, 22 by 34. That one's kind of close. So I click once on that one to select it. Notice I get a preview over here on the right hand end of that um, dialog box. And I'm going to hit open down here. And there I am in the family editor so that I can go in and play around with this thing. The first thing that I'm going to do is do a save as because this is going to be a custom title block. I don't want this thing to end up in my uh, Revit uh, Imperial library that I could write over uh, when I update my Revit version. So I need to save it in a different folder, uh, probably on a server where everyone can get to it. So to do that, I go to the purple R, the drop down, save as, and slide out to the right there and save it as a family. Uh, that's the option that I've got. So save it as a family. And now I need to navigate away from this title blocks thing. I've actually got a folder set up in my documents. Uh, so I click on My Documents over on the left-hand end of that Save As window, uh, drop down, and what I've called it is Revit Office Standards. So I open that one, and then I'm going to call this one um, Charlie 30 by 30. I guess I could call it a title block, huh? Block. Okay, so uh, I know that I was successful with that because the ribbon up there at the top of my screen changed and now it says Charlie 30 by 30 title block. So now I can go in and start making changes. Um, first thing I'm going to do is just make it the right length. So to get that to display, I'm going to go ahead and put a dimension on there. So I'm going to dimension from that end that end of my sheet. I can zoom in a little bit there and I see that that's 2 foot 10 so it really is 34 so I'm gonna change that um, so I'm gonna click escape a couple of times to get out of that place dimensions command and I'm gonna select this left hand end of my sheet and then I'm gonna select that uh, dimension and change that to 2 foot 6 which is the same as 30 inches and so now my sheet is uh, 30 inches from left to right. I'm going to drag this guy in just to get him back on the sheet there. That's my, my border line. And then I'll put a dimension going the other direction to see how we're doing there. So home tab and then aligned d dimension from the top of my sheet to the bottom of my sheet. Place that dimension out here to the right hand side and uh, 1 foot 10 and so I need to change that one as well. So escape a couple of times to get out of the place dimension command, select that bottom edge of my sheet, and I'm going to change that to 2 foot 6, hit enter, and now drag this guy down a little bit too, and so now I've got a sheet that is 2 foot 6 by 2 foot 6. So I've got this squ square sheet. And now I can go in and start making my office standards here. So I'm going to delete off some of the things that come out of the box with Revit, uh, just some of the graphics and things like that. And we'll make a custom title block here. 
to go on this thing. Now remember, we've talked about in other videos, we've talked about these guys here, which are labels. And remember, labels and text are not the same thing. So when I click on that guy, where it says project number, notice it comes up just as text. That means it's going to be the same thing on every one of my title blocks that I pull in and use uh, this family for. This up here, uh, where I push on uh, sheet name, that one comes in as a label. That's different. That means that it's going to draw information from my uh, project information that I put in on the Manage tab. It's going to draw that information and fill this in automatically for me. So those are two different things, and so you've got to be careful with those as you're making changes to your title block. Okay, so I deleted off the dimension lines that were on the sides of my sheet here, just so that I don't get confused. And I'm going to go ahead and select, um, so let's do it that way, select the um, information that's on the standard title block. I'm just going to move that straight down just to get it out of my way. So notice when I do a fence to select things, if I start at the lower right hand um, corner of my screen and drag over things, anything that I touch, even if I don't enclose the whole thing, anything that I touch is selected. Uh, let's unselect that. If I start at the upper left and drag over things, then only the things that are completely within my fence or my selection area actually get um, selected. So I did it that way, and then I'm just going to use my move command here and I'm going to move that guy just straight down to that line and there we go. So now I've got that rearranged a little bit. Now let's say that I've got a logo for my client um, and I'm going to make up a client, let's make it um, McDonald's. And so what I'm going to do is go out and grab a logo that I know that I want. So I'm going to switch over to Internet Explorer and I've just gone out and uh, did a search for images of McDonald's. And so I like this guy, the second one over. And so I'm going to click on that to select it, let that pop up. I like it, I'm going to use it, I click on it. Of course I should have permission uh, to do this. I'm going to do a, a save picture as. And I'm going to put that into um, my picture uh, folder and I'm going to just leave it named McDonald's 2, that's fine. Uh, minimize that, get rid of that. Okay, so now I'm back into my, my title block here. So I'm going to put that McDonald's logo up here in the upper right hand corner of this sheet. Uh, okay, so now I'm ready to place that McDonald's logo into my title block. And so I'm going to go and grab that image. So I need to uh, first make sure that I'm on the insert tab up at the top of my screen. And then in the import pane here on that tab, or on that ribbon, sorry, I've got an image option. And so <clears throat> that image actually went into my pictures folder, which is in my libraries. So if I click on libraries, open pictures, and then navigate down to McDonald's. So it all depends on where you've stored whatever image it is. and um, Revit will recognize most graphics images. So this one happens to be a JPEG, that's fine, pretty common stuff. So I'm going to click open and now uh, that X that's on your screen represents that logo. If I go ahead and click, it's going to place it. Uh, I'm going to drag it to shrink it, put it up here in this corner, uh, maybe set it off to the side, get rid of a couple of these lines here, those are just graphics, and then bring that in zoom in on a little bit and continue to shrink it and there you go. Um, bring that up. There we go. Okay, so now we've got a McDonald's logo. So if we're doing McDonald's projects, that might be what our title block would look like. Um, I'm going to bring in, um, you could bring in your firm logo, you could bring in your consultant logos. Um, I'm going to bring in another image here, so I click on Insert, click on Image, and um, this time I'm going to go to My Documents, and I happen to have a business card that's been scanned as a JPEG, so I'm going to bring that in, and shrink that a whole bunch, and use that as my 
image. Okay, so now I've got my sheet set up and um, I could save this at this point. It'd probably be a good idea. So purple R, save, or control S on your keyboard. And once we've got it saved, we can load this into our project. So I'm going to load this into uh, a template by clicking the load to project button up here. In the project, since I've got more than one project open right now, it gives me this menu and I get to select if I want to. Um, it defaulted to the one that I needed, which is my project template. So I go ahead and click OK. And I'm in a floor plan view, so I can't see um, a sheet. I need to go to a sheet view to be able to see that. So I'm going to open A1 in my project browser. I just slid down just a little bit over there. And so sheet A1, I double click on that to open it. And there's the title block that's existing. Um, we'll take a look at that. That's uh, pretty similar to the one that we started off with. It's just that that one is a 30 by 42, uh, and we started our editing process with a 22 by 34. Um, but same idea. And so what I'm going to do, I just need to select that uh, title block, and then I can use my properties uh, drop-down selector there to change that to the custom title block that I just made. Um, it's the 30 by 30. Click on that, and it changed it. And there you go. Now I've got my new title block into my template and now whenever anyone starts a new project for McDonald's and I use this template they are off and running with the right title block.